How's it going, everybody? Rybrand here today, and we are back with another episode of our Honolulu Hammerheads expansion franchise mode. Uh, and I'm here at the edit line screen because one of you guys mentioned at the last, at the end of the last video, to go ahead and try switching Foxa and Bodker. Uh, Bodker, minus two, two points in nine games, not fantastic. Also, that bottom line was a minus one, uh, but now with Foxa, it is uh, even. Kaspari Kapanen, ooh, would make that line even better. I don't want to know if I want to give Kaspari Kapanen less time. He's got five points, so that, uh, is he playing any special teams? Kaspari Kapanen doesn't look like he's really playing any special teams. Uh, maybe, yeah, he's playing penalty kill, but he's not going to get points from the penalty kill. Exactly, so, uh, I think I'll leave him there on the third line. Uh, Kasha does lead the team in points. So, oh my goodness, if I put Joel Aginla on the second line, that gets so close to a perfect line. It's nuts. Uh, but that would even maybe benefit Aginla a bit. He's a minus one. He's got five goals in nine games played. It's kind of tough for me to say to take him off. But uh, Andre Kasha, just about the same amount of points. Maybe we want to switch it up to some depth scoring. Uh, I can say from example that the Buffalo Sabres moved Jeff Skinner to the second line and put a guy like Victor Olofsson on the top line. Worked out so far. Uh, 2 0 and one so I'll take it. Uh, maybe we can get some depth scoring because you you, you know you know you never want to just bank on one line to carry you. Uh, but you know I would like to get again as much ice time as possible so he grows. Uh, dang, this line is real good. That Chris Kreider, Bing, oh bingo, that he is nice. He does not really fit on the first line though. Would Palat fit on the first line? Uh, Palat's not really a fit per se with the system uh chris Kreider's fit would be fine that would make uh that a little bit better but i like the plus three i'm gonna keep again with some with some veterans uh, in Kreider and stall uh kasha 23 year old gets to play on a relatively young first line Braden points just a, a stud david perron is the veteran on that line we're gonna go with palat brassard uh, and Kapanen, again, you got some veterans and a youngster. Uh, Sorelli, Fox, uh, Bjorstrand. So some guys that have been in the league. Um, it, not really much concern on that fourth line there. Uh, minus two here on this second pairing. So maybe I want to move uh, at least Larson up. Brandon Carlo. Uh, Steven Ger uh, Samuel Gerard, Steven Gerard, that is a soccer player. Uh, Hayden Fleury there as well. So that's fine with me. Um, who fits and who doesn't fit. So it looks like Larson's not exactly a fit. Uh, he fits actually better on the fourth line, or the third pairing. So I'm not going to put Hayden Fleury up there, I don't think, and I don't think I want Carlo. Carlo's not much of a fit either. Uh, but we still got Mark Giordano, so I'm fine with that. Larson's going to get that first pairing time. He's a right-handed shot with Gio's left, Carlo's right, Eric Gustafson. Uh, so left, left, right, and then left, left. Uh, that's okay. I'd rather have the young youngins playing. Scratched, Pitlick, maybe could be a guy that... Uh, his compatibility is really good with the coach, so maybe he'd be a guy to potentially throw in there instead of uh, an, uh, Bjorkstrand. Maybe because Bjorkstrand doesn't really fit on that fourth line. I could get a plus one. Yeah, Bjorkstrand's not a very favorable fit. So I think I'm going to scratch him in favor of Pitlick. Scratch. Yes, there we go. And a plus one now on that bottom line. So there we go. We now have pluses on the fourth line. Uh, no minuses anymore, which is good. And I think that's going to really benefit the team. Uh, through the first nine games, we are in second place in the division. Uh, a game in hand on the Oilers, but that would still put us four points back. The Oilers are 9-1 and one to start the season. That is pretty impressive. Uh, let's go ahead and check out what the AHL squad is doing. Chandler Stevenson is beasting and feasting down there like I knew he would. Um, Lawson Krause, a decent player as well. Joel Armia. I mean, we got a lot of decent talent down there. Uh, Joel Aginla is the, really the guy that we want to be looking out for. So he's already in the NHL. He's got... He's an 84 overall. Hopefully, playing him on the second line, getting him the plus three up to an 87 with Kreider. Uh, and I forgot who the set Stahl, Eric Stahl. I remembered. Don't worry. Uh, let's go through another month and see how we do. Hopefully, these new line pairings and changes in the lineup pays dividends. And look, 5 nothing right there. Marcus Johansson uh, and Marco Scandella for a third, first and a third. I like Marcus Johansson a, a, a lot. I really do. 83, he's got 9 points, 11 games played, plus 2, 17 minutes a night. 
Really good discipline, just all around solid playmaker. Got a shot too. I mean, the guy is good. The guy is just good. Fits um, doesn't doesn't fit on anybody uh, in any scheme. But he's on the second line, their first line power play. Just an all around good person in the locker room. Good, good for him. He's a good person. Uh, but I don't think I'm gonna make this trade simply because I don't want to give up my first just yet. Because uh, we could still use some prospects, even if they're not going to be medium elite, medium franchise prospects. Oh, a 5-1 loss and a 4-3 loss. That's two L's that kind of hurt. But can we beat a Pacific Division uh, opponent, rival? Wow, big trade here. Uh, Sammy Votnin, a third and a fourth. Uh, and Schlemko for our first and second this year. No, thank you. I'm going to bypass that trade. No, thank you. Still don't want to do that. Ooh, a 9-4. 9-4 win over what was that the division leading oilers um so with the nine game trial complete how do you think so what are we gonna do i can't uh i can't look at again i mean i looked at him just the four games ago he had five goals in nine games six points he definitely deserves to be in the nhl uh i think we should keep him up with the big club excellent he agrees with the call let's go with the decision me and mark brassard we're on the same page here he's i mean i'm sorry he was just too good to even consider sending down like why would i why would i send him down i mean i know i, I said he was going to play in the nhl all season anyway um sammy vatanen no i don't think i want sammy vatanen and a, look at that three big wins the lines start to gel we are 10 and 5 uh the standings can i look at the standings this way no i can't uh so it'll just scroll hopefully we can get back to i wish it would stop i wish i could use like the right stick and flick it around but uh we are in second behind the oilers now after that big win by one point same amount of games played uh and so far so good i think what were we well i forgot what we were through nine but oh wow look at eric stall absolutely take off there on that second line 19 points in 15 games played uh kasha on the first line still doing well uh, i believe he had five goals two assists so two goals five assists in the next six that's seven points in six games. I will definitely take that. Uh, Aginla didn't, hasn't gotten a goal on that second line yet, uh, but he did bag three more assists and is a plus, a plus one. I mean, for for goodness sakes, the guy's shooting 15%. Uh, he's got two game-winning goals, three three power play goals, four power play points. Nothing on the shorthand because he's not playing uh, shorthand. He is winning faceoffs though. The dude can take faceoffs, I guess. 80 faceoff rating. This dude's got an 80 face-off rating as a right winger. 80, 8, 0 as a right wing sniper. Are you are you telling me I should be moving him to center? Should I be moving him to center? Ah, but he works so well next to Stahl there. I think I'm going to leave it, but dang. he. Ah, now we know that if we don't want to bring back Stahl, again, let him be our second line center. Deputize as it anyway. I mean, the dude's got one hell of a shot too. Uh, but so far, so good for him. Uh, Pims for Kreider is kind of up there, but again, I think he's a power forward. Yeah, he is. Discipline at 80. Would like to see that higher, but you know what? Not going to complain too much. Really good physical stats. So, it's kind of what I want to see. Protect Aginla, uh, and old man stall here. Uh, second line forward, he's doing exactly what he should be. He's feeding the puck. I don't know who he's feeding the puck to, per se, because Aginla didn't get a point. Uh, and he's obviously not scoring. He's got one goal. Chris Kreider's got five. He's got five. Okay, he's got five power play points. So it looks like he's doing all his work on the power play. Now defensively, looks like we've started to turn things around as far as the plus minus is concerned as well. Eric Gustafson now doing much better on that second pairing uh, with Carlo. Carlo is just more of a shutdown defenseman for us. Defensive defenseman, that's what he is. Uh, but he's a plus four. No points. Would like to see him get a, a few more points. But he's only 22. He could still develop into something. Offensive awareness and passing isn't fantastic, but. Yeah, I'll take a plus four and no points. Uh, 12 pims. Sam Good for you, Gerard. No penalties at all for Samuel Gerard. Uh, Hayden Fleury also doing well. He's got three points. Two goals. Uh, shooting 9%. Gustafson shooting 10%. That's what I like to see. Uh, Giordano is pumping the puck on net. Three points for Gustafson. One point for Giordano on the power play. Uh, and then goaltending, we have Jakob Markstrom. 943 save percentage. Juicy Saros. Nah. Eh not doing as well maybe it is time I mean, he's only played five games can i really criticize the guy for five games yes i can eric comrie ooh, not doing enough to warrant that call up that i was asked that i was said i think he was doing really well in the first set of games but maybe i'll give uc saros the you know the rest of the month to bounce back and if uc saros doesn't bounce back for the rest of the month i think i'm gonna call up uh 
Eric Comrie and figure out what we're going to do with UC Saros. So let's go ahead, keep going through here. Uh, as far as Joel, uh, Joel Aginla is doing, he's doing very well. I'm happy, but I can't believe Stahl is doing that well on the second line. 6-2 loss to Buffalo. That one kind of hurts. 5-3 uh, to the uh, Red Wings and 4-2 to the Devils? Come on, boys. Bounce back. Wow, 6-2. We do not play close games. And the second that comes out of my mouth, we lose 2-1 and 3-2. Look at that. Two close games. 4-2 in. There we go. Let's get back in the winning column. Boys, an awful end of the month that sees us drop the 500. We were not 500 uh, to start. We have dropped massively. We were, what, 10 and, uh, I mean, Eric Stahl's still killing it. But I think we had, what, 10 wins, 5 losses in t in 15 games? We got 2 and 7 in the next group? Like, you can't you can't be having that. You got to do better. I mean, I know we're an expansion franchise. And I'm not expecting to win the cup in season number 1. Uh, but, you know, I'd expect better than 2 and 7 in our last 9. I'm pretty sure that's what we went uh, Gustafson does want a contract extension. So does Kreider. Who is expiring is the question. Broussard, Bodker. F Bodker's not even playing. He's making $4 million and he's not even playing. He's not really a scheme fit, though. Uh, he's losing morale because of ice time. Wow. That, uh, and because of his individual performance. So maybe it's time to move on from Bodker. See what we can get for him. He's making $4 million. 81 overall. Let's see if we can uh, find a trade for him. Proposed trade. No, I wanted to go down and click on find trade. Because at 12 and 12, that's really upsetting cause considering how well we were doing. Uh, he probably doesn't have a ton of value, if any. Um, yeah, Mikael Bodker right here. Add asset. Everything's moving really slow today. Bodker for a third and a fourth. Bo Bennett. Uh, Richardson, a third and a fifth. Terry and a third. Third and a fourth. Dion Phaneuf. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just got to check out Fanuf. If it is, he's, he's probably not even worth it. Yeah, he's a 79. I mean, if we wanted veteran leadership, um, he would, wait, he would fit into our forward line one. Good news, I could put him on the left wing there, up with Braden Point, and apparently he'd fit in just fine. Uh, he'd fit in the top four defensive pairings, which is nice to know. Um, but I would like to find a trade, actually, for... Uh, for Bodker. I could try and force something through, but this just... I, I like to experiment with the trade finder. I wish more trades kind of came through. Um, but, you know, it's the first year with the trade finder. They gotta probably still iron out the kinks. I'm cool with it. It's a nice addition. Steen? Steen? Uh, and a third. Interesting. That is a big contract. Timoshov uh, and Engvall. Let me look at... Uh, Engvall's got the .925. Uh, I don't know if he's actually good, but that leads me to believe they signed him to a bigger contract. Uh, he's 70 low. No, okay. Pierre Egenval, not good. Uh, but I believe the other player that they wanted to get rid of is Lilligren. Cool. Uh, no, Timoshov, who also is not great. We're going to ignore that, and then we're going to go back and check out Steen with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, yep, there's Steen. Really cheap uh, to acquire. Not doing so hot. Where would he fit? He would fit in forward line one, which means we can move... Ah, he's an 81 overall. I always remember him being a lot better than that, like an 85 or something like that. But, uh... All right, we might just hold on to Bodker for now, guys. Go another month and then reconsider where we're at. Uh, I don't know what caution means. Team chemistry, caution. Cool. Um, great, that's what I like to see. Anyway, 67%. I... I don't even think they cared to put any time into it. We're three and seven in our last ten. You cannot have that. We need to bounce back here with some wins. We got some Western Conference opponents here, uh, three Pacific Division opponents here in our next five. So in our next five, if we can win three, uh, cool. Yeah, no, I've got Braden Point signed. A bit weaker than normal in this year's draft class. Interesting. Can we beat? We do beat Vegas though. That's big. Can we beat St. Louis? St. Louis, two zip win. That's a, our first shot out of the season. A 7 3 shellacking at, the, oh my god. And then we lose 3 2 in back to back games. I, I want to make line changes, but how do you how do you stop? I, I, I can't. I can't take Aginla off Eric Stahl's line unless Aginla is not doing well. But, uh, I mean, Aginla's got 27 points in 29 games. 
Uh, Kasha. Oh, oh, this first line is a big ol' minus. Well, that, okay. Maybe it's time to put Kasperi Kapanen on that first line. Because I don't want to necessarily move a Ginla up. Uh, because, just because he's doing so well. So is point the problem? Point is not really the problem. Cool. Obviously, I'm not going to take stall off that line. I'm not going to put Pitlick up there. Uh, I really like to keep point up there. What if I... Uh, let's let's get a little mad here. Let's get a little crazy. Nope, I already tried that. I know I did. Uh, but we'll leave Kaspari Kapanen up there. Defensively, how we looking? Um, interesting. I have no clue what to make of our stats here. Gio, fine, fine. Uh, I mean, you really don't like to see minus 10 from Gustafsson. Maybe Gustafsson's the kind of guy I could move? What is what is this contract looking like? He's got a one-year deal at 1.2 million. I think he does have an extension signed. If I can't, if I can remember correctly, I'll maybe try and find a trade for Gustafson. He's good though. He's an 84. It's not like he's playing poorly. He's just a big old minus, and that could have to do with him getting some first-line time earlier in the season, first pairing time. Uh, did I? I definitely passed him. There's no way he's that low. Uh, Gustafson. Oh wow, he's got a substantial amount of trade value. So. Who's going to give me something? A first and a third. I could get a first round pick out of Gustafsson, so keep, her, uh, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. If we're not a playoff team, maybe a guy like Gustafsson is the kind of guy I'd move. Uh, I don't think I want to move Geo. Definitely don't think I do. Well, uh, we, our future's pretty much set. We got a young core. Geo doesn't necessarily fit that. I could sacrifice the season here, save some cap, and get rid of uh, Giordano. He's. I mean, he's 36. He's not going to get better, that's for sure. But he's not been bad by any stretch uh, of the imagination. Uh, no extension for Gustafsson, so I would have to sign him to an extension. What would I get for Geo? I know I traded Brent Burns for Braden Point, but I do kind of want to keep getting younger because if our top two players are 23 and 18, uh, we just need to surround them with talent. I mean, the 28-year-olds and the 27-year-olds are fine. Even 31-year-old Perron is fine for the first two seasons help us out. But Gerard's 21, Carlo's 23, Aginla's 18, and Point is 23. Uh, so we'll see what what Gio would fetch us. Nobody wants Gio. That's great. Maybe it's his contract situation there. But let's see. Can we throw in a third? Uh, no trades were found even with the third. How about a second? No trades were found then. Okay, interesting. So we I, either I try and force through a trade with Geo without just asking the computer, or uh, we just kind of stick with him until, like, the draft, maybe? Uh, but we'll simulate up here till January 1st. Hopefully we can make some line changes that uh, work. A 4-3 overtime win. I'll take any kind of win I can get. And then a 6-1. Wow, when we lose, we lose bad. Oh, wait. Is UC, is UC Soros our issue? Because if UC Soros is the issue, I can, I'm can i going to consider just moving on from UC Soros. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for stats. That's what I'm looking for. Unfortunately, I don't think they have box scores still. So uh, we're just out in the wind to hope. But ah, look at that. The minus is on the first line. Joel Aginla is doing wonders as a rookie. I am not going to move him off that second line. You best believe I'm gonna, he's going to stay right there. 84 overall. I'm pretty sure that's what we drafted him at. Uh, oh my god, UC Saros. You are horrible. You are gone. It's as simple as that. I don't even care what uh, what the uh, what the stats for Comrie look like. But Comrie is going to be our backup. And UC Saros is going down just simply because he's been absolutely putrid uh, in net. Comrie, come on up, bud. Uh, yeah, I know I'm going to have to fix the lines. Uh, edit lines, not going to go best lines. UC Saros has lost morale for being sent down. Well, if you didn't suck, then you wouldn't be sent down. Eric Comrie, welcome to the squad, bud. Can I see how he did during the season? So he's got 918, 217. That's not bad. 15, 8, and 4. Four shutouts. You know, not, not, not too upset. Not very upset with this. No points on the season for him, but that's just more of a... Just a... Uh, who cares at that point? But uh, Eric Comrie, you are the backup. And yeah, guys, the backup goaltender is going to make all the difference. Back to edit lines. Uh, best lines. Zach Aston Reese, where would he fit? I don't know if that, that's not his, that's not the right coach, though. 
balance shoot energy balanced i guess he would fit on the fourth line but we don't necessarily need somebody to fit on the fourth line we need more guys that are going to be top end players but then again we're uh we're not really a great team um are we 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 have some talent we're, we're getting there we're on our way but um we'll just have to reassess our, ourselves here at the midpoint what do we got eight more games till we hit the midpoint of the season Thir 33 games so we got one two three four five six seven eight so once we get through the midpoint of the season i'm thinking i'm gonna cut the video there um four one win there we go four two win look at that back-to-back -back wins let's go uh oh the blue jackets have fired head coach marcel gagnon stop simulation let's go check out marcel gagnon and see how gannon gannon did i say gannon ah who cares at this point we'll go find him coaching staff we'll go find the available coaches uh brassard's a b which isn't necessarily horrible but he's a defensive minded coach gannon wow his oh look at that his teaching specialty is veterans he doesn't necessarily fit uh his teaching specialty oh will help prevent veterans players from declining wow he is really good he is very very good as far as he but he wants to play a physical game that makes sense if you're gonna go in columbus i guess coaching style teacher will get the best out of young players it will bias towards a more balanced team and line strategy set these coaches are not afraid to play young players in key situations best suited for rebuilding teams interesting he wants to be aggressive he just normal ice time allocation uh so it doesn't like to roll four lines per se but he likes to shoot on the power play uh kaspari kapanen and sorelli benefit but not a ton of people would benefit from his coaching style which is unfortunate nhl head coach Selleck here uh oh his offense is a c get out of here with that nonsense you're basically just a power play coach to me 57% scheme fit, rolls three line, and then he rolls all of his pairings. So, okay, he would play three lines equally. Uh, Broussard here, there's our coach, C, coaching influence. I'd like to see him be a little bit better, but, you know, I don't know if coaching is going to get us over the hump, but we definitely, he's a defensive-minded head coach. He's a conservative offense, uh, and I mean, he, he traps it up, seriously? And he plays a 2-3, four check, but he plays the trap in the neutral zone something doesn't add up here the 2-3 is a very aggressive four check but the trap is a very defensive neutral zone pressure so i'd be confused too if i played for this team but maybe in the offseason we look to find a new coach somebody that fits more with our youth mentality uh, and somebody that you know is gonna roll not maybe not roll all four lines but lean more on our guys our younger guys and help them grow i want a coach that's gonna grow our guys because i i'm not expecting the first season in the nhl to have one like vegas but i am also not expecting the team with the talent we've acquired to be t near the bottom of the league now we're in, right in the middle of the league which is good which is bad at the same time uh at anaheim a one nothing win there a 5-3 loss but a 5-2 win okay balances out 5-4 against the coyotes and a 5-3 loss son of a we just can't seem to figure it out and put a few games together and now stall is no longer uh over a point per game but he's got nine goals 28 29 assists 38 points in 41 games for a second line center is not I can't ask for too much more. Uh, we are currently out of the playoffs by uh, four points. The Golden Knights would be our biggest competition. But we are, you know, teetering right there. Maybe make a move or two. The whole league has played 50% uh, of their games on the season. So four points, two wins. We're really not that far behind the Golden Knights. Make one trade, one change, something. It can, it can definitely spark the team. Maybe Joel Aginla needs to go back on that first line uh Braden points bouncing back again la 20 goals in his rookie season he's on pace for 40 goals this season uh what's his ice time look like 16 he's playing less than 17 minutes a night Braden points playing 19 uh mark giordano doing very very well uh 28 points but that does kind of say something more about our team rather than uh geo himself now 28 points he's on pace for 56 i take 56 from the norris trophy winner but uh i'd like to see our forwards get to do a little bit better so we'll see uh stalls so again a minus two kasha's a plus four perron's a minus eight Kreider's a plus seven palat uh, kapanen i do think we need a new head coach tyler pitlick is a minus 12 he's a minus 12 
that's way oh my god i need to play uh, bodker's going back in i'm sorry but i did ju i just noticed that pitlick is horrible so i'm gonna put bodker in now but you guys let me know any thoughts you guys have uh about the rest of the season what should i do what should i maybe be doing uh bjorkstrand how does he look uh Mike Mikhail Bodker has no data to display for some reason. We'll play Bodker. I think Bjorkstrand uh, he is a little bit worse. Uh, although he was two goals, one assist. Bjorkstrand, sniper, he's 24. He's got speed, decent defensively, not great. He's best suited for line two, but then again, he's not all that great. Uh, uh, so I think we'll leave this the way it is. Maybe a Ginla goes back up to that first line and Kasperi Kapanen stays there. Kasha does not fit that line at all, which kind of sucks. Um, Chris Kreider would fit, but it would also take the plus three away. So I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to do a lot of things right now. I think I'm going to, before I start over tinkering with the lineup just to get the pluses, sometimes you just got to play your best players, you know? Uh, Carlo... How, how have the defenders been? I didn't take a look at the defenders. So 28 points for Giordano, 12 for Larson, 11 for Gustafsson, who's a big minus. Carlo is doing fine. Uh, and actually, this Gerard's doing quite well, I'd have to say. Um, he's an offensive defenseman, so I can't blame him for the way he's playing. You know, he's getting points and no penalties still on the season. 12 minutes. Maybe he gets some special teams time over a guy like Gustafsson, because Gustafsson's clearly not doing anything with it. Uh, so we'll put Gerard in there, and we'll put Gerard on the power play there. Hopefully he can do something. He's not going to go on the first power play. Definitely not. Kasha, Broussard's on there. Uh, Stahl's there. Do I want to put uh, take Broussard off the power play and get a guy like uh, Kaspari Kapanen in there? Um, let's see. Uh, Kaspari Kapanen. There we go. Changing current line. Uh, that's fine with me. Kaspari Kapanen. Doesn't, it's playing. He is playing special teams time. I don't want to load him up too much with ice time. Mikel Bodker. Maybe since he's playing, he would be a fit for there. Uh, are Pal is Palat playing? Changing current line. Palat was. N oh yeah, he's on the first. Why is he on the first? Oh, because he fi he fits. Okay. Peron, Stahl, Kasha. Palat. I think I need another left winger. Uh, is Kreider? I don't think Kreider's playing. Changing current line. Ooh, now look at that. Oh, Kreider is playing. Kreider's just a... Uh... Dang it. I thought I had something there. So all my left wingers are playing. I need a new right winger on that second line. Power play. Kaspari Kapanen. Kasha, maybe. Can't play Do Jolik Inla. Let's put Bodker there. Give Bodker some time. Yeah, I mean, he's a goal scorer. The, dude, the dude's a sniper, right? No, he's not. He's getting a sniper with a horrible shot. He's got no shot. What is he good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. All right. Um, Kasha probably it was then the best bet. Kaspari, I'll just put Kasha. But he was already there. So I, I get why they now put Broussard. Uh, How stall uh, as far as face-offs? Oh, yeah, he's a really good face-off man. Uh, so we'll try and get, I guess, one of our centers there. Broussard, Foxa, Sorelli. Sorelli, how, how do you do, bud? Um, I guess Broussard would be our best bet. Um, okay. Uh, that's hold, line, pinch, cycle, shoot. Wait, that's defense. Um, Foxa, yeah, that's fine. Wow, Broussard is just a really good scheme fit if he was a defender. <laughs> so we're going to put him there. Carry dump bias. Oh, wait, was that his power play biases? Maybe. Kasha with the sniper. I'd rather him be on the forward line there. And I think that's all the tinkering I'm going to do for today. Let's go ahead and double check the stats before uh, I ruin a, a perfectly working power play. But 21, 19, and 1. It's not bad for your first season in the league. Uh, well, here we are with 3.04 goals per game. 3.05 per game and 3 per against. So, eh. We need to cut down on the goals against, but we're scoring plenty fine. I'd like to see... I mean, nobody in our division is less than three goals against per game. We actually have the best defense in the, in the division. We just need to score a bit more. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the team. I, I think I've been saying that. There's nothing wrong with our team. 
Our power play percentage is up at 22.6%, which should be pretty good. Penalty kill. Oh, my God. I don't, I, I don't know why we're losing game. I mean, we're probably losing uh, simply because of the way we're playing in each game. But the, based on the way I'm reading the statistics, there's nothing wrong with the team. Uh, we just need to string some wins together. Maybe a move to bolster and get a, just better players? Maybe not. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comment section, though. You guys have great ideas all the time. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one.